by withdrawing subsidy, you increase revenue to government. Maybe you create a few jobs more in the downstream sector. And you lose multiples of those jobs in the rest of the other, econo uh, other sectors of the economy. And you f find that the general economic activity uh, goes down. Yes, of course, you heard NLC's presentation, but the shocking revelations were coming from Wale Tunubu, who is in charge of uh, Oando. He's a marketer, and of course, he tried to defend the marketers, or those he calls the legal marketers. And the others, he, say, have, uh, he says, there are over a hundred of them, but more than half of them are briefcase marketers. Well, to take this matter further, we're joining us, uh, joining us from our other studio here in Abuja is Emeka Okengu. Emeka Okengu is uh, the chief executive of Ant Hill, and of course, he is Ant Hill Concept is of course also a an analyst, economic analyst right now. Emeka, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Okay. 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 Now, Emeka, you you you're watching the subsidy probe. Uh, you've been watching it, and uh, a lot of drama there, a lot of uh, <laughs> revelations, we, we may say. But let us now look at this issue. Looking at the revelations from Wale Tinubu, who is to blame for those who are called briefcase marketers in this case? I, I, think, I think, first of all, we shouldn't look at it from one little nibble. We should look at it holistically. And in looking at it holistically, first and foremost, two issues arise here. Uh, the first issue is that the subsidy probe is laudable to the extent that it has brought to the fore this very wide-ranging, integrated system that was put together to fail. But having said that, we should also now see the issues as a major distraction. And this is where I want us to be able to take this thing from. Discussing what Wale Tinibu has said or what his position is, how does it help the first clip that you ran that shows that first and foremost, you have mineral resources, you mentioned so many of them coming from all these areas, and then enlisting the human capital in those areas, what did you use? You used the word Boko Haram. You understand? So these are what the issues are. We have gone beyond the issue of fuel subsidy. There is nothing new that is being said in this panel that wasn't said in the Magnus Abe panel. That hasn't been said in all the other pro panels or all the other technical issues that have been so far you know, initiated to look at that area. It's been said by the audit panel. It's been said by the audit report. So what I think we as Nigeria should be looking at now is to first and foremost go back to what the Minister of Finance said, what the President said. He said, if I remove subsidy and I'm able to now save the money I am presently throwing at these people who are both legal and briefcase importers and exporters, I can be able to now get into the rail sector and begin to do things that can create jobs. This should be a challenge, my brother. Because if we discuss what Tinibu said and what Tinibu didn't say, there are something I want you to also know. The pro panel, I, I, I stand to be corrected, I'm not a lawyer, is not a judicial panel of inquiry. So what it is they're going to do is that by the end of the day, they're going to now make recommendations. I'd have been more comfortable if Nigerians were more focused on, we have six months to be able to prove that the subsidy removal can be able to now start generating jobs and northwest and northeast and south south of nigeria can begin to function again nobody's talking about it the first one month is gone and they say six months within this first one month we have not seen the short program nobody's discussing it anymore all the ministers who are coming on nta to be able to discuss the short program are no longer coming everybody is now focusing on probing something that even the dumb best Okay, of us in this country, knows. Everybody kept saying it. Nobody has, Labour does not have an argument with removing subsidy. I think the argument is if you remove subsidy, those who will now be using the PMS as enterprise, I don't know where on earth I passed my neighbor generator 
can be able to be used as a medium of grading an entrepreneur. And I don't know where on earth people can be able to now encourage university graduates to now get into start buying petrol, to start doing a baba, or start repairing GSMs, and say that you're surviving. I don't know where on earth we are not arguing that removing the subsidy or whatever you call it, price fixing or price differentials, you know, from diesel was what actually created most of the problems that we have in this country today. And that what we need to do as a country right now is to be able to say to the National Assembly, how are you able to strengthen the hands of the institutions that can take this probe to a conclusive conclusion? How are we able to now initiate the legal frameworks? Is it possible for us to be able to now present some special courts? The National Assembly sat on a Sunday because this was a, a national emergency. I think we'll have a bigger national emergency. And instead of now discussing what Tinubu or what uh, the NLC man says or what the minister says, I think we should discuss the first, you know, uh, clip that you ran. If you have a hundred dams within an area, how many people are within those areas? What is the mineral resources available to those people? How much is it valued in situ? How can you be able to now help it or use it to create jobs for these people who are out there? If you watch the subsidy riots, there were three, three, three types of Nigerians. They were the very rich Nigerians, who of course we are discussing. They were the poor Nigerians who are about 60 million. These rich Nigerians are no more than 2,000. And then you have the hopeless Nigerians. So what we are talking about now is call them Boko Haram, call them Ebesu, call them Masop, call them whatever, call them OPC, call them whatever it is you want to call them. The issue we have in Nigeria is that you have over a hundred million young people out of job. And if government is saying they are out of job because I can't help Okay, Emeka, I think uh, trying to cut you short there. You raise very many salient issues. You've talked of the human resource. You've talked of the effect of all these on uh, 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 human resource, uh, especially, especially as it concerns the uh, uh, security of the country and all that, which we, which we talked about earlier on. Now, you, you all, do you think that we should wish away this probe issue, this fuel subsidy uh, issue, when it seems to still form a kernel, because Nigeria is faced with various issues, and Boko Haram is just one of them. Fuel subsidy is just another. We are looking at Boko Haram. We are looking at fuel subsidy right now. And do you think because we have done it the first one month of the year, we, we've, we've talked about the fuel subsidy, we should now leave the probe, I mean, this uh, 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 National Assembly probe, to just go on like this while we sit back and watch and talk about other issues. Remember I said earlier that this probe is not a judicial panel of inquiry. If it was a judicial panel of inquiry, it would have had the force of law, and they would have been able to, by the end of the day, present what you call a white paper that would have now indicted people that are now apportioned, you know, punishment or whatever. What I'm saying is that we have agencies that have roles in determining who is right or who is wrong. Let me tell you, Sinibu in his, in, his, in his presentation made a statement. What it is we're getting is, is, is we get by, by act of some legal, you know, a, a relationship we have. So it is not going to be very, very easy to now finish this pro panel and start taking people into jail. You're going to be talking about a lot of technicalities, even before you can go on trial. So if you're going to take all these long periods to do the probe, and thereafter you now take it to EFCC, and thereafter you now start uh, initiating the judicial panel of inquiry, I am saying is a distraction. Okay. And most of the major players who are supposed to be telling us what to do with the subsidy, you know, savings, are the ones that are now there telling the story everybody knows. Now, you talked about insecurity and government now giving so much money to the security subsector. Now, let me tell you where that thing, you know, pricks me. It pricks me because you cannot be talking about, you know, insecurity in absence of job security, in absence of social security, okay? These are the kind of things that cannot create insecurity. And again, you've even provided a solution. If you now have so much of these mineral resources, 
okay, abound all over the place. Let me ask you a very simple question. Let me draw Nigerians to just until 10, 15 years ago when the mines closed in Jos. Jos was the most peaceful place in Nigeria. Why? Because the mines in Jos were employing people. Both Hausa, Ibo, Yoruba, nobody, nobody was, was concerned about where you came from. So what I'm trying to say is this. Even if you give 10 trillion, trillion to security you know, uh, services, these days people are tying bombs on their body and uh, they're, they're, they're running into people and are blowing themselves off. What kind of training would you give? What kind of money can you be able to now give to stop somebody who wants to blow himself up with bombs on his body? Well, apart well, from creating jobs. Uh, um, so I am saying Mr. that Tengu, this thing is a major distraction. I'll have to cut you there, uh, but thank you very much. I, I think your, your points are noted. You seem very passionate about this, and we definitely will get back to you. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have time to discuss uh, more about uh, this issue. But we've been looking at uh, the full subsidy uh, probe the cabal system, the corruption system, and of course, you know that uh, uh, you, you heard what everyone, everyone said. You heard what uh, Wale Chinubu, who is a marketer, said. You heard what uh, the minister said. Now, and we had as guests uh, Emeka Okengu, who is uh, the chief executive of Ant Hill. So, thank you very much, Emeka, for coming on the program. Now, now let's. Uh, go over to our next segment and to launch the next segment i've got choma onyabo right here choma over to you so what do we have on our special feature today well we have uh, special people we have uh, like this spectacular set of small scale business who've shown that